Selling a great solution to a willing market through the wrong channel is almost always going to generate really disappointing results. Funnel Vision is brought to you by Math Marketing, creators of the Funnel Plan. Math Marketing is the source of the one, two, three of B2B. Marketers, particularly consumer marketers, often use the term channel to mean a tactic. Uh, web is a channel, radio is a channel, TV is a channel. Uh, salespeople and most B2B marketers use the term channel to mean the sales channel, directly, indirectly, what type of indirect, etc. So, now that we're on the concept of sales channel, what kind of channel partner strategy is going to work best for your business? And how do we make that decision? Stick around on today's video. I'm going to answer that question. I'm going to do it in 60 seconds. And apparently, I'm going to do it in four steps because that's what it said at the headline. So four steps, 60 seconds, how to set channel partner strategy. And if you stick around to the end of that, I'll also share with you a tool tip and I'll show you how we do it in Funnel Plan. Well, what kind of channel do I need? What type of channel will serve me best? That's completely the wrong question. We think too much about ourselves. Think instead about the buyer. What kind of sales channel does the buyer most want to buy through? That's the most important question. So think about the buyer. Any, any buyer who's very, very new to a category, uh, there's a new kind of category like tablet computing was four years ago, let's say. Back then they would say, gee, that's a really interesting idea. I wonder how I can use it. What kind of channel would serve that buyer best? Well, it's an innovative idea, and so they need to deal with the innovator to the fullest extent that they can. And so the really early adopters want to get as close to the point of innovation as they can. Now, maybe the innovator is Apple back in the day, or maybe the innovator is the channel who's using the tablet computer in a really interesting way. But it's not a high street reseller. It's an innovative seller, as close to the point of innovation as you can get. Normally, for most of us, that means selling directly. After that, the buyers who haven't really bought from that early, that first wave, they were just waiting for a little bit of proof to emerge. In fact, I'm going to make reference here to Jeffrey Moore's chasm theory because that's obviously what I'm drawing from. Let's take a look at the chasm here. We're talking about the early adopters here first, and the early adopters are the risk takers. They want to, they're willing to pay a, um, uh, take a risk because what they want is a high return. Now, if that's the case, the next group of buyers just aren't that willing to take a risk. And so they need a little bit of proof. The channel they want is the channel that most understands their space. Again, we're not talking about high street resellers at this point. Now, after that, if, after we've earned multiple segments, then whether you're going to buy it is no longer the question. The question is from whom? And that's the point where convenience really matters. No longer do we need, as the buyer, do we need an industry specialist. We just need the most convenient seller. And so as we're ramping up the, the, the curve, um, now we want the convenient reseller. And that's where we want the third party reseller who's most, who's most convenient to us. Now, market starts to max out at the top. What kind of buyer, or what kind of buyer do we have there? Often we've got the infrastructure buyer, meaning it's IT, or it's finance, or it's HR, no longer the end user department. What kind of channel do they want to buy from? They want to buy from the one who can comply with their requirements the best. And often that actually means, in theory, I want to buy from a reseller, but in practice, the larger customers are starting to insist that they buy, again, directly from the vendor. So we've got this notion where, in the beginning, we've, the vendor is sold directly, then, as the market's matured a little bit, we're still selling directly. Then we're selling through a channel. And then the vendor often has to sell themselves. Why? When the market's peaked? Because often the channel is losing interest and they're moving on to other topics. Now, now the market starts to decline. Where are we at there? What's the buyer looking for? Well, frankly, if you've run the race and won, you're the gorilla in that market, you get two choices. If you haven't run the race and won, you're probably exiting the market at this point or being bought out. Now, if you have won the race and you're the gorilla in the market, then probably 
we're actually looking for new users and new uses. Well, those new users and uses are like new buyers. So once again, they want to buy from the innovator. Whoever it is that's innovating, whether that's you or a third party, that's who they want to deal with. They don't want to deal anymore with the convenient buyer. It's now up to the innovator to sell directly. In the main, therefore, we've gone direct, indirect, direct again, and still direct at the end. And that's the best channel partner strategy. Let me tie all that together in 60 seconds and four steps. Four steps in 60 seconds. Firstly, get the order right. Think about your buyer first, yourself second, and your channel third. Focus on the buyer. Secondly, decide the channel strategy that the buyer most wants. Thirdly, sweat the detail. It's not just a question of direct or indirect. What kind of direct? What kind of indirect? For example, the early adopter wants to buy from the innovative seller. So don't put your plotter out into the, into the field at this stage. You want to be selling with a strategic frame of mind, able to have new conversations with new buyers. So it's the kind of buyer, uh, pardon me, the kind of seller that the buyer most wants. Fourthly, sell your vision for the channel partner strategy. If you've worked out what the right answer is, make sure that the rest of the business buys into that answer. Because if you're doing one thing and they're doing something else, it doesn't work. That's it, hope it helps. For the tool tip this week, I want to talk about a thing called Optimizely. Now, you may already know about the idea of A-B testing. Basically, it's remove all variables but one, and then test two options, an A and a B, against each other, and let the market tell you which one's the winner. Works for landing pages, works for email copy, works for lots of tactics. I want to now apply this to web pages. If your web page has a conversion task, whether that conversion is a form fill or even just a click the next button, whatever that conversion target is for your web page, use a tool, we use Optimizely, use a tool for testing different variations. What Optimizely lets you do, it's really super clever, is it takes control of a certain page. So when any visitor goes to that page, your website's been told, oh, for this page, race off to op Optimizely and see if they have any changes for us, and then present either the A or the B. And what you then do in Optimizely as the marketer is you can muck around with the page. Let me show you an example here of two pages. In one, we've removed all of the social proof that we thought to be so important and left a single call to action. What do we find when we tested with social, without social? We got a four times higher conversion rate once we removed all the other alternatives. Optimizely lets you test hypotheses like that. Hope that helps. If you enjoyed this blog, then likely you will enjoy others. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to receive this blog by visiting mathmarketing.com forward slash blog or by visiting our YouTube channel. If you have a colleague who may be interested, we would be so grateful if you invited them to subscribe. Why don't you do that now? And when you come back, we'll show you how we do that in Funnel Plan. As you know, Funnel Plan is a great way to decide and then articulate your objectives, your strategy, your velocity, and the tactics that marketing and sales are going to use together, end to end, to earn the right to serve new businesses. We're talking today about channel, and I want to dive into two components. One is the target market, which so shapes the channel, as I've just argued, and the actual channel itself. Now, you can see on the chasm diagram here that tiny, tiny print, you won't be able to read it, let me read it for you. 20% of our market is in early adopter mode, and 80% is in bowling alley, which is this first stage after the chasm. In fact, you can see those same numbers up here. Let me dive into the software and show you where that comes from, and then finally how we get to this section, the through whom or the channel. Starting with the buyer, not the channel, for the reasons I've already argued. Who are we selling to? Selling to this type of business and this role, and we're giving them this amount of our love. 
But here's the important thing. How mature do we think that group of buyers will be as they go into the market? In the early market, they're going, well, that's a really clever idea. Show me how that would work for my business. In bowling alley, bowling alley they're saying, prove it. Show it to me. Okay, very different buyer. Now, we said that 20% of our market is in early market and 80% is in bowling alley. So let's take a look at the channel strategy we're going to build to reflect that. Two elements of channel strategy. One is very simple, and that's just the articulation of the, of the channel. Who are we going to sell to? Now take a look at what we've written here. Internal marketing profiles, that's really just describing the internal role, then warms the prospect for for sales involvement. Direct sales force recruited for their understanding of innovative buyers and they're trained to identify and extract needs and to bring a deal to the table. Think about that. That's, an, that's a visionary salesperson. That's not an infrastructure salesperson. The guy or girl that you would put on the job of selling to IT or to finance or admin is different from the one that we're describing here because we've got an early market. Now, there's also some discussion down at the bottom here about how much channel we use, but I'm going to save that for another day because it's quite a detailed conversation about resource modelling, um, but it is part of your channel choice. First one for channel partner strategy, though, is to identify what type of buyer do my buyers want to buy from, and that starts with who are the buyers and then how mature are they. Hope that helps. In next week's show, I want to dive into the funnel process. Until then, may your funnel be full and always flowing.